Hey everybody, Lady Charmaine here. I forgot to let everybody know that last Friday I did what we call a girl chat. I had some wonderful teens here, even my own kids, and we also had some mentors here and a lady by the name of Mary Carr who kicked down some knowledge to all the ladies in the house. We had an awesome time and we talked about everything from sex, drugs, and rock and roll. We're going to give you a sneak peek into it, just a couple of the conversations that we were having. So enjoy and here we go. Hi, these are all the wonderful ladies. Hello. Hello. Oh, I almost said single ladies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the camera's on you, too. <laughs> 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 these are all the people of the village. And it's called the family. Oh, you know what? I like that on What's Her Name show. The Ooh, village. Raising, raising Whitley. Raising Whitley. Oh, That's what okay. she's saying. The village. Yep. Oh, okay. The village. Yes, yes, yes. Because you know it takes a village to raise a family, don't it? <coughs> yes, it does. Yes, it does. Praise the Lord Jesus. She will have changed, I think, her um, willingness to talk to me by saying, I've experienced this as well, and I know I'm your mom, hmm. but I know that you're. this is something you're going to experience. I know that you're going to be introduced to sex. Like, that's going to be a topic that you're going to, that comes up. When it comes up, don't feel embarrassed. Don't feel like you can't, you know what I mean? Like, really made me feel like I could come to her versus being like, oh, no, you can come to me, but you still, you know what I mean? You're still my mom. So even though you want what's best for me, you still have restrictions. You still have, mm -hmm. I know on the back of my head, you may say it's good, but there's still going to be some repercussions. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I just, just I think we don't understand, especially as I'm speaking out as I'm a teen, but at the time I didn't understand a lot of stuff. So you just want to have that openness. I think that, not just saying stuff, but really giving examples of stuff, it, it is more helpful. Like, not just saying, oh, I'm here if you need me, but really going into detail about some of their experiences so you can understand it's relatable. I think that would have mm -hmm. been easier mm -hmm. for me. Because I don't know if that makes sense or not. Yeah, that makes sense. Because then it's like, oh, you really do get what I'm, you really do understand what I'm going through because you literally just said what I'm being presented with versus just like, I'm your mom, I'm here if you need me, that cliche. Like, and talk to me about anything. Show? What was the theme of my show? Y'all remember? It's a few things parents just don't understand. Mm -hmm. yeah. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And I get it. It's, now that I'm an adult, it's not that they don't understand and they definitely want what's best for you. But sometimes you just, there's a disconnect. Mm -hmm. And I think because we feel like it's a next generation, like you don't get it. The base stays the same. Certain things change, but the base stays the same. That's so right. if if, That's if right. parents like are more relatable with that base part, I think that it'll be easier to relate to teens, especially. Well, my girls won't talk to me about sex, and I talk to them about sex all the time. I don't hold anything. It's back. uncomfortable. I'm not to me. It's especially it's real. too. It's real, yeah. right? But it's just uncomfortable by nature. Like it's just weird to to have that conversation with your mom. Yeah, it's just weird. It shouldn't be. They tell me I'm nasty. But <laughs> <laughs> it's not nasty real. Like, stop. But I do talk to them about everything. I mean, openly. Mm -hmm. Even the little kids. Yeah, it's a, have, But is it more of a consequence level? Like, if you have sex, you know, this is going to happen. No, happen. No, you know, no. Or is it no, like, you know. No, it's with me, it's not like that. You, you know, when I was coming up, you didn't mention anything you didn't like do that. It, yeah. No, yeah. that it, that was just you didn't talk you just about don't anything. It, that's it. Children were to be seen and not heard. You didn't have a voice, so you couldn't express anything. Mm. You didn't know about sex. You didn't know about anything, so you tried it, and you know that's how you learn. But with with me, I talked to them. I even talked to my own kids because these are my grandchildren. I talked to my own kids, and they even say I'm nasty, and they <laughs> grown with kids. <laughs> so. Uh, you know, I, I I believe that you you should educate them. You, you need to educate oh, yeah, your kids, absolutely. and they can come to me and tell me that they're having. Some, Brittany has a boyfriend, and for a long time she was afraid to say anything to us, mm -hmm. and uh, I had to get on my husband about it. My my husband is very protective. You know, even with I raised her brothers, and when it came when the oldest one was ready to have sex he came to me and he told me so i went and bought a banana got some condoms and i put the condom on the banana and showed him how to protect himself and my husband said you supposed to be safe i said what you mean supposed to i am right. <laughs> and he said but you're telling him to go and have sex i said no i'm not what i am telling him is protect yourself all right pastor bullock 
<laughs> I say, now, why would you give a child a car and don't get, have any insurance on the car? Uh -huh. It's the same thing to me. He's going to go out there and do it anyway. He's telling me he's doing it. So would you rather that he come home with an STD, AIDS, or HIV? Or a baby. Or a baby. Or a baby. Or a baby. And he said, oh, well, you're supposed to teach him about abstinence. I say, well, do you abstain from sex? Right. Mm -hmm. And not and that it's not important to teach abstinence. And I'm, it is very important. I, it is so important. It and it's so important. possible for our youth to be abstinent. And it's, and it's empowering. Yeah. Um, but I think it's also important to educate. And a lot of Christians True. especially True. just don't even want, Christian parents don't even want to have that conversation. It's just, you don't need to be having sex. That's just what it is. Oh, and it's, I mean, you, I was talking to my mom about this, uh, actually, because this is a little bit off subject, but one of her friends, I guess, she for her, he's 14 or something like that, and her parents kept finding weed in the house. They kept finding weed on him. And she was saying how, she's like, uh-uh, I'm not going to raise, you know, every time I catch it, I throw it out. I'm not going to raise a, a kid that's just going to be smoking weed and all this stuff. And my mom was like, eventually he'll change. I was like, why does she keep throwing it out? Why is she just, like, having a conversation with him? Right. And my mom was like, well, eventually he'll change. And I was like, no. no I don't, it doesn't matter how great you raise your children, what you install in them. You People, they're going to learn. They're going to make their own decisions. And they're going to do what they only, only Only thing you can do is do the best that you can and try to educate them. But they are going to be faced with the time when they're going to have to make a decision. That's right. mm -hmm. And that's something that... It's just individually for that person, you can't force them to do it. So mm -hmm. educate them. So along with abstinence, most definitely, I think education. people need mm -hmm. to have education. And then when they're faced with that decision, you're not at fault as a parent for what they do or don't do. You mm -hmm. did your job. Mm -hmm. And then you're there to, I'm talking like, I got kids. Like, I know what I'm talking about. But, but, no, but, but you know, what you're saying is actually true. Because if you don't teach your kids, someone out there is going to yeah, teach somebody them. Will. Yeah. Somebody going to teach them, and then they'll learn the wrong way. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So I definitely agree with teaching. You got anything to say? Because you know, if you have sex, I'll beat you to death. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 don't, I don't have a problem with that. I don't want her to have sex. But she's almost 18. And I know she's going to do what she want to do. What a lot of Christian and parents forget they were teenagers. Mm -hmm. And they did not come out adults and married. Mm -hmm. I feel the same way about single women who are dating or trying to date. They should be taught how to date. Yes. Instead, they're not. They're not. And this yeah. is how they mess up. And those of us who are married will say, don't let him kiss you. Don't let him touch you. Don't do this and don't do that. And they go home every night or whenever and they make love to their husbands. So you, you have to turn the whole thing around. What were you doing at that age and right. at that time? And remember how hard it was for you. Everybody that's married, they were not virgins when they got married. We all made mistakes. I mean, I love the Lord with all my heart. But when I met my husband and, and the Lord told us to marry each other, I, I failed many times. I would fall and we would have sex and then I'd go, oh God, forgive me. I was, I was never <laughs> Lord, help me Lord. And then the minute the man got close to me and started kissing me, it was like, I thought I, it was dead. I thought my flesh was dead. <laughs> but I found out my flesh said, hey baby, I ain't going nowhere. Let me introduce you to what's really going yeah, on. And that's, and that's the truth. truth. Yeah. And then another thing that's so big to me when it comes to sex and especially mm -hmm. this hit home hits home for me the most because i this was a real issue in my life like um i start i actually start counseling emotional counseling on monday this coming monday um but sex was a huge part of me trying to figure out who i was as a woman who i was as a as a person and trying to find validation so another another big part of sex that i think we don't talk about enough especially to youth is what all comes with it. It's just don't do it, you know, but we don't really go into detail about how, what we're giving to that person, what they're giving to us, mm -hmm. how it affects us. It's much more than just, there's a consequence to it. You have sex and then, or it feels good for the moment, and then it's over, don't do it, it's not worth it, you know, cause you know, what if that don't work out? It's right. so much deeper, there's so many layers to it. It's, it's so, so, it's so, it's so, so, it's so spiritual, yeah. you know it what really I mean? Is. And it has yeah. an effect, and I think that's the part that you, especially youth that um, truly have a, a relationship with God, and, and really cherish the importance of their relationship with God, understanding, you know, why he created sex. 
and what the purpose of sex was created for. And then evaluating your situation as if, and if those few minutes, though that moment, that self gratification, all that is if it's really yeah, worth it. Really worth you really know what I mean? And putting yourself in situations where you can avoid that. And knowing that if you're with someone who is pressing that, that that may not be someone that you need to be with. Right. It, it rises, it comes, you know what I mean? But if you don't have any, if you're not dating someone that's on that same level with you spiritually where they understand the importance of waiting in the first place, you know what I mean? Like really having having those conversations and understanding that is so important. It's so important. I, I used, to rem I'm used to remember people telling me, this type of stuff but not in as in detail and i used to be like whatever like i don't do that you know mm -hmm. and i waited for a long time while everyone else was doing it and stuff i wasn't i was like no nope, i love god uh -uh. it wasn't until i got to adult till i started to stuff started to hit me so it's a little different perspective but just i don't know i think there's so many layers to mm -hmm. it and it's not just an act of affection because you really like somebody and you want to show them you care about them Right. It's so much more deeper than that. And if you really take the time to, to get to understand what that is, then you remember that. And that starts to replay in your mind when you get in those moments of intimacy with somebody. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. dang, should I be here? And if you have a relationship with God, conviction will come. Mm -hmm. You start feeling like, I should not be doing this right now. You know what I mean? So it's so worth it to wait. It is so worth it's, it's such an amazing experience really waiting in and waiting for the person that god has you to be waiting for you know what i mean it really 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 is and, and i'm not just saying that because i know i'm saying from experience for waiting for a long time and then giving it up and being like this is what it was exactly. like really it's not <laughs> even <laughs> I'm, scared. I'm scared to do that because like there's kids that are like mm -hmm. yep yeah. But the enemy has taken it and perverted it so bad until now there's a spirit of sex that has been released over everybody. And everybody, there it's, it's so bad. Now they're selling children and having sex with children. Not that this wasn't here all the time. They've always done it. Just like she said, it, the, whole, the baseline is still the same. They've always been doing the same thing. But the thing is, it's a spiritual thing. Mm -hmm. it, it really is a spiritual thing. And that's the part that a lot of people don't understand. And they just think it's a physical thing. And they take sex and love and say it's the same yeah. thing. But it is not. So I remember nice. when I was younger and, and I was going with a guy that wasn't working. And, and, and they would say, well, you should eat sex. You know, mm -hmm. it, you what they meant, if you love him so much, he don't have anything. He don't have a job. He ain't working. What you going to do? Eat sex? You die. You can't get full off eating sex. And I'm not talking. I'm not saying. I'm not saying oral sex. I'm not saying that. No, but that was what they said. That's what they said back then. And it makes so much sense because you, you're so in love. All you want to do is have sex. Yeah. Or you want to be then, as close to that person as possible. You want to express your like your love mm -hmm. and your. I just mm -hmm. remember just being smitten mm -hmm. by people. Mm -hmm. Just oh, you so fine. Yeah, oh, my kids get a piece I, of that. Yes, and it's just like <laughs> what you you don't realize how much you're giving to that person. Right. That's something that you can never yeah. get back. Right. And, right. and especially if you start to be. Like, say you're in a relationship with somebody, you guys wind up doing that, and then the relationship doesn't work out. Even if you guys are together for years, and then you go to the next person, and that doesn't work out, and all these people aren't your husband, you are constantly giving pieces of yourself that belong to God right. to someone else. And they're constantly giving pieces of them to you, so you've got... So you got, and then it just creates... Yeah, you're, you're having sex with Billy everybody Bob, he's had right. sex with. It's called soul, soul ties. Soul ties. But you know what? You said something. You said you want to be so intimate with that person. The way you express that is really the way our relationship is supposed to be with our father. Absolutely. I learned That's that That's what that year. is. That is exactly this what year, that is. I was really like feeling like I wanted to... Like, you know how you're in a relationship and you want to go through all the motions of a relationship, right? You mm -hmm. want someone to court you, you want to date in them, you want mm -hmm. them to take you out. All these things, you want to feel loved and appreciated and all that stuff. And as God continued to grow my relationship with him, he's showing me that you really can do that with him. Mm -hmm. When you're in a relationship with someone, you want to talk to them, you got to spend time with them, you got to get to know them, their character. When you first start talking to someone, y'all in that in-between stage, you ain't dating officially yet. 
but you're getting to know them. You kind of you take the time to get to know who that person is, what their character is like, all those things. Mm -hmm. That's the same thing with God. Mm -hmm. Like you really have to take the time to get to know Him and His character and the things that He wants of mm -hmm. you and what you re what He requires mm -hmm. of you and His promises to you. Mm -hmm. Just like man will promise what they will do for mm -hmm. you and all this stuff. All that same mm -hmm. things happen with God. And then what's so great about spending time with Him? And gaining our relationship with him is you start to find your own identity. Mm -hmm. That's true. So in doing all that stuff with him, he starts to show you more and more of who you are. And you start to grow as an individual. And then he readies you for when that right person is supposed to come along. And there is no time frame. I would get irritated too and be like, when? Like, <laughs> I'm going to do this. Okay, I got a relationship with God. But when is it? Just be anxious for nothing and just take your time. You sex is it will always be around For it is real. never going nowhere it is a blessing god gave it to us and it is an absolute blessing but the timing <laughs> <laughs> the timing is on him you know and yes. it's and it's so important it is so important to just really understand that it's not just a simple act and of affection okay so how inspiring was that troya was kicking down some knowledge and so was sister mary the information was so good now, don't pay attention to those teens' faces looking like they were bored. They received so much information. Sometimes I think it might have been a little too heavy for them, but they were receiving the information. I know sometimes certain topics can be very touchy and kind of, you know, uncomfortable, but kids need to hear it today. We are living in a very sexually charged world, and they're trying to shape our children's minds. So guess what? The best place to learn about it is in a comfortable place with people that love you. And so that was our that was our job during our girl chat. I almost thumped it there, you know. But uh, during our girl chat, we're going to have plenty more at my house, and I I'll just keep you posted on the rest of them. I wish I could have posted. We were here for what? Uh, we ended at almost midnight and girl chat began at seven o'clock. So I wish I would have been able to post everything we talked about, but you know, it was a little too much information, but I wanted to at least share with you some of the things we talked about at girl chat. And we got a few more of those coming your way. So stay tuned.